I'm Wes Mays, Mayor of the City of Coppell. When I took office this past May of last year, I was grateful to assume the leadership of a city that has a very solid foundation. This is a city with a rich history built by visionary leaders. It's always tempting to make a decision quickly, but we need to be mindful that those easy decisions will have long-term consequences. It is through forward-thinking leadership that we have the capability to weather any storm while continuing to improve our city to meet the growing needs of our residents. This past year certainly gave us a few challenges, but it also showed that we are prepared to meet those unexpected surprises. It is very exciting to be able to forge new visions for our future to ensure that Coppell is a great place to live, work, and play. Let's first begin with how our planning allowed us to continue to deliver world-class services to our citizens in 2021. We all remember the February winter storm. Who could forget? But through it all, our dedicated department leaders and city employees kept us moving forward. With more on that topic, here's our Public Works Director, Kent Collins, and Fire Chief, Kevin Richardson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, obviously, it was an unprecedented winter storm. Uh, something that we prepared for, but even, even under those circumstances, uh, we were dealing with, with conditions that we had never had to deal with before. Uh, the, the extended power outages, um, the frozen pipes in a lot of residents and businesses. Um, so we spent most of our time focused on um, first making sure that folks needed water, obviously, and that we could provide uh, treated water that they could use and drink. Uh, we never had to issue a boil water notice and that was through the efforts, continuing uh, continuous efforts uh, on the part of our folks, uh, our, our staff, as well as the efforts from Dallas Water Utilities and Encore um, to give us power and to give us water when we needed it. Even though we had all these leaks all over the city happening all at the same time, um, we also spent a lot of time um, focused on the streets and making sure that folks, that you know, residents and businesses, if they needed to get out and use our, our streets um, and our roadways during the icy, uh, the icy conditions, that they were able to do that in as safe a way uh, as possible. Um, but there was a lot of work 24-7 for Public Works to ensure that those basic services that people needed uh, because they were stuck at home, that, that we were able to provide that throughout the winter storm. And uh, I know that Chief Richardson now is going to go into uh, more detail on the actual emergency operations. Thanks, Kent. You and your team did a fantastic job on the winter storm event. So the city of Coppell does function under an all-hazards approach to uh, dealing with emergencies. And so we actually have an emergency operations plan, and that's where we prepare for disasters, pandemics, weather events, and in this case was the winter weather storm. The city did a phenomenal job uh, from the fire department's perspective. The emergency operations center located at Life Safety Park did exactly what it was designed to do. It provided a, a hub for all of our elected officials, for all of our incident commanders to, to manage the, the incident. Uh, for over seven days, uh, the operation was running 24 hours a day. Um, and then partial uh, for several months after uh, during the recovery phase. The fire department itself made over 1,000 emergency calls over that seven day period. And if you can imagine, uh, we had crews that were running nonstop 24 hours a day. So one of the, uh, the challenges for emergency operations is twofold, is to manage the incident itself, which we did, as I mentioned, with the emergency operations plan. But the second part is to maintain our continuity of operations which means we have to have sustainable government. And so we're working two incidents at the same time. And both the continuity of operations plan and the emergency operations plan, we're working together seamlessly to make sure that not only did city government maintain our, our service level, but we're also able to manage the incident itself. Thanks guys, your teams were truly amazing. Our city was also prepared on the financial front as we continue to deal with two challenging initiatives from Austin. With more on the current and future impact that these items will have on our city, I'd like to now turn it over to our city manager, Mike Land. Well, thank you, Mayor. I really do appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to talk to our uh, community about these two issues. Uh, first, dealing with uh, Rule 3.334 
You know, we had the opportunity to preview that rule back in 2019, the fall of 2019, and we saw what the potential impact of that rule could be. And we immediately at that time <clears throat> reduced uh, our expenditures, we froze our positions uh, that were unfilled, and we took a step back to see where we were uh, as far as operations are concerned with the potential impact of that rule. And what that rule does basically is it says that the state of Texas across the board would go from a origination uh, sales tax uh, sourcing to a destination sales tax sourcing. And why that's important for Capel is we've built our economic model uh, since the 1970s on our logistics, warehouse distribution, and everything what we call on our west side of the city of Capel. And then this last fall, uh, we did file suit against the state controller for the uh, implementation of the rule so that we could get the rule thrown out uh, for various reasons. Uh, the lawsuit will be occupying our time in 2022. Uh, and uh, the, the trial date is set for September of 2022. But what's really important for our citizens to understand is that we have already put in place the reduced expenditures, the reduced manpower, reduced programs and everything as if the rule were in place. What that means from a financial standpoint is the city of Capel collects nearly about, in total, uh, nearly 44 to 45 million dollars in sales tax. And uh, with this rule, if it were to go in place or destination were to go in place, could impact us anywhere from 50 to 60 percent of our sales tax. Uh, so you're looking at around 24 to 26 million dollars as potentially being impacted for all of our funds. Another thing that happened was SB2. The legislature put in place uh, something that they call the no new revenue rate. And that no new revenue rate basically means existing properties that were on the roll of January 1st of the current year, uh, whatever they uh, generated in property tax revenue in the previous year, uh, that same property, even if though it's grown in value possibly, uh, would only generate the same sale, uh, the same property tax as the previous year. And so what we have to do is we have to plan for a basically no new revenue rate uh, being a guiding principle for how we approach our budget on the general fund side. With inflation the way it's going right now, in the past it hadn't been that big an issue, but with inflation the way that it's going right now, you can see how <clears throat> it's not going to be able to keep up with inflation. So therefore it's going to have an impact on the way that we do our expenditures going forward. So that concludes uh, a little bit about the impact of SB2 and Rule 334. Preparing for the fiscal year 22 budget began in February 21, and the process was similar to that used in 2020 to prepare the fiscal year 21 budget. The planning performed by staff in late 2019 to create a plan to reduce expenditures in response to SB2's revenue restrictions and the reduction in sales tax revenue caused by the rule change was instrumental in how quickly staff was able to reduce expenditures in response to the 2020 pandemic. Specifically, fiscal year 22 budgeted expenditures for all funds of the city totaled $119.2 million and are 11% less than fiscal year 20 budgeted expenditures. Budgeted revenues for all funds of the city totaled $119 million and are 16% less than fiscal year 20 budgeted revenues. I chose to compare fiscal year 22 and fiscal year 20 budgets because the fiscal year 20 budget was prepared in 2019 prior to the passage of Senate Bill 2 and before the state comptroller proposed the sales tax rule change. The comparison between these two years shows that city leadership has already acknowledged the reduction in revenue and did the work necessary to reduce expenditures. The reduction in expenditures was a bit trickier than revenues, where the state dictated revenue reductions without consideration to the impact on city services. City departments needed to an analyze the impact that each reduction in expenditures may have on services provided to citizens. This required city departments to analyze their budgets line by line. The services and projects in the fiscal year 22 budget are being accomplished while holding the property tax rate flat at 58 cents, which was reduced from 58.4 cents during the fiscal year 21 budget process held in 2020. 
After the budget and tax rate are adopted, city departments continue to assess and plan for the lasting impact of the revenue restrictions and reductions on the city's future ability to maintain the high level of customer service we proudly provide our citizens, coupled with our ability to keep the city's infrastructure maintained and functional. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Mayor Mays. Thanks, Kim and Mike. Even though Senate Bill 2 and State Rule 3.334 pose extreme challenges to Coppell. Our city was hard at work to grow our tax base through new business relocations and economic development initiatives. Not only did we have a great 2021, we are also poised to continue this growth well into the future. With more on that, here's our economic coordinator, Mindy Hurley. Thank you, Mayor. While many of the city's small businesses still need the community's support to fully recover from the impacts of the global pandemic, Coppell did experience many exciting openings, groundbreakings, and business announcements in 2021. The city welcomed its fourth hotel with the opening of Aloft on State Highway 121. The opening of this hotel, along with Four Points by Sheridan, True Hotel, and Fairfield Inn, provides 519 lodging rooms available in the city of Coppell. There are currently two additional hotels under construction and five more hotels that have been approved by City Council. Once all of these hotels are completed, there will be approximately 1,400 lodging rooms and additional meeting space available in Coppell. The City welcomed corporate partners such as 1-800-CONTACTS, Louis Vuitton, Sagent, McLaren, Aurora Operations, Printful, and many more in 2021. And the City was very excited to see the groundbreaking take place for Vary's new corporate headquarters at the corner of State Highway 121 and Freeport Parkway. So as you can see, all of this activity plus more made for a great 2021. In 2021, our city departments were hard at work to ensure the infrastructure and services to our city for many years to come. Here are a few of our department leaders to recap how our current projects are paving the way for a bright future. All right, so during the last year, we've been extremely busy in public works. Um, first, I wanna just quickly touch on the sale of the North Lake property and the North Lake itself. Um, from our perspective, the North Lake sale really allows us to focus on the services that we provide to our residents and businesses. Uh, we were gonna have to spend time and effort and resources uh, maintaining that property and maintaining the lake level and not having to do that really just frees up resources so that we can focus in the areas that we're here to do, which is provide those services to our residents and our businesses. Um, if you drive around Coppell, one of the projects that you will uh, have experienced and will notice that's ongoing still is our intersection improvement project. Uh, we're implementing a number of turn lanes, new turn lanes at uh, four different intersections, and we're actually planning to add a fifth intersection um, the nice thing about that project is as we complete a lane, even though the overall project is not complete, we've completed a number of those turn lanes and they are open and available to drivers. For the next year, the big one really on the list is Beltline reconstruction. Uh, you might, if you're a driver and you use Beltline, you've seen the message boards, you've seen some of our static signs that we've put out. Um, it is going to be a high impact project. Uh, it'll take about 15 months to complete, and uh, once it starts, it will, um, like I say, you, you need to, to look for alternate routes if you can. Uh, we're going to be rebuilding Sandy Lake Lift Station, which is critical to our sewer system. Um, and it'll be, we're basically building a new lift station next to the old one, and once it's ready to commission, we'll take the old one offline and, and convert over. Um, that you won't really see it because it's kind of hidden and out of view, um, but it is a big impact uh, project for our, our sewer system. Um, and then the last project uh, that I want to mention is our wagon wheel elevated tank rehab. Um, that project uh, will begin probably this, uh, this January or February. Um, and what it will be, residents shouldn't notice it. Um, we will dewater or drain that tank. Um, we will sandblast it, clean it inside and out, and repaint the outside. So once it's done, you'll notice that something has changed uh, because the new tank will match the tank that we did two years ago uh, down on Southwestern. So 
Um, that's the update that I have on our projects, past and present and future. And with that, I'll uh, pass it along to Chief Richardson. The fire department is extremely proud this year. We were able to enhance the, uh, the, the services to the city of Coppell by opening a fire station number four, which is located on the west side of town in the industrial district. We were just so excited that we were able to not only complete the facility on time, uh, get the equipment in place, get the staffing in place, but we were able to do it on time and under budget. So that was kudos to all the city departments coming together to make this project a success. Also, part of dealing with the emergency operations portion of the fire department, that involves everything as well as dealing with the pandemic. The fire department was able to successfully uh, make all of our calls for service within our industry standards. One of the innovations this year that we really focused on was regional activity, which is sharing of resources. Uh, and when we're involved in, industry, in situations where we exceed our resources, such as a winter storm or a pandemic, we have to uh, utilize some of our neighbors in combining our resources. And some of the things that we have done is we have enhanced our automatic and mutual aid agreements with all the uh, area departments as well. And so we too had to make a lot of changes, but um, the innovations that the fire department and the rest of the city was able to incorporate uh, was just uh, a blessing for all of us because the lessons we've learned are definitely gonna make us much better. 2021 brought us a lot of challenges and I was really proud of the way the city and the departments all came together and faced all those challenges. We're always preparing for what's gonna come next. This year, we'll be preparing for what happens in 2022. We're always preparing five years ahead. That's what we do. That's what the police department, the fire department, the entire city staff works on continuously to, to meet those challenges. In 2022, the Coppell Police Department will continue to build its relationship with this community. We cannot do our jobs effectively without the help of our citizens. We will continue to build on all the programs that we've had in the past and will continue to do. National Night Out finished second in the nation last year, first in the state of Texas. That's a pretty big lift. And I was really proud of everybody that came out, all the departments that came out, the fire department, public works, all the volunteers who showed up. Uh, that's how that was achieved. The other thing I want to reassure the citizens on is one thing we talk about a lot at the Coppell Police Department is our why. We constantly ask our officers, why do you get up and put that uniform on every day? And the answer is always, it's about the community. That's the why. And we're gonna keep that in front of us as we build on 2022. Through all of the challenges in 2021, the Community Development Department remained focused on helping residents and businesses. The Community Development Department was able to maintain all operations during the global pandemic and instituted remote virtual inspections to keep projects moving forward. In an effort to help businesses attract and retain employees, the city continued workforce transit for Coppell businesses and held the second annual virtual job fair. This year, the Community Development Department looks forward to initiating more neighborhood engagement programs such as a Neighbors Helping Neighbors program that will take place in the spring, all of these efforts are aimed at engaging residents and maintaining neighborhood integrity. So over the course of the year at the Cosby Library, as we work to continue to come out of the pandemic, we work to reinstate our services as responsibly and sustainably as possible. And we are grateful to be able to restore our full hours of service in October 21, thanks to the support of council and filling all of our vacant positions. We are also proud to earn the TMLDA Achievement of Excellence in Library Services Award for the 16th consecutive year. We also were proud to win a Texas Book Festival grant for the second year in a row. And this time the grant funded the expansion of our collection of audio enabled books, which in keeping with the first two pillars of 2040, supporting a learning environment and inclusive community fabric, support a broader range of learning and sensory needs. We also continued the Meet Your Neighbor series, which won a Demco Upstart Innovative Programming Award from the Texas Library Association. And this series is produced in collaboration with community members and showcases stories and experiences from across the Capel community. And lastly, in fall of 2021, we began our strategic planning process, which is actually the first round of what's going to become an ongoing annual strategy cycle. So we look forward to lots of fun and exciting things in 2022. 2022 will see a new utility billing system and citizen self-serve portal. During 2021, utility billing staff have been preparing for the implementation of a new utility billing software. Staff will implement the new software in February 2022. The new software includes a new citizen self-serve portal, 
The portal is also expected to go live in February, and all customers who wish to pay utility bills online must register for an account on the new platform. So be on the lookout for this very soon. The Parks and Recreation Department has a lot to be proud of over the last year. We were thrilled to finally open the new Coppell Art Center after delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Our team did an incredible job being flexible and agile during the uncertainty and still found ways to offer safe programs and events to the community. Our inaugural season kicked off with the grand opening weekend headlined by the incredible Kristen Chenoweth. For those that were able to attend, it was a magical moment to be back together in a beautiful space, enjoying a live performance of that caliber. It was absolutely worth the wait. We have a full slate of exciting shows through 2022, and we're sure there's something for everyone to enjoy. The Parks and Recreation Department was also incredibly proud to receive the National Gold Medal from the National Recreation and Parks Association this year. Being identified as one of the top five park and recreation agencies in the world is an honor beyond all honors. We are so thankful to have supportive elective officials, volunteers, and city leadership who value parks and recreation services and have empowered us to become the best of the best. We hope our citizens are proud to live in a community with high expectations, and we are proud to serve them. Thanks to y'all, it is through your hard work and dedication that our city is what it is today and that the best days for Coppell are still in our futures. Speaking of our future, I would like to close with our Vision 2040 plan. Again, prior and current leadership are always looking to the future. Our Vision 2030 plan focused on infrastructure and projects. Vision 2040 develops programming for our citizens to ensure that Coppell is the best place to live, work, and play, not only in the Metroplex, but anywhere. I'd like to bring back our city manager, Mike Land, to tell us more about our Vision 2040 updates. Thank you, Mayor, for mentioning the 2040 vision plan for the city of Coppell. The way I describe 2040, it is aspirational. It's about the future of the community from a uh, quality of life standpoint, not from an infrastructure standpoint, but from how we communicate, how we live together, how we play together, how we do things together as a community. Where do we want to be from a diversity standpoint, from an inclusion standpoint? You know, as our demographics continue to change, how do we change with our community? And what does it look like going into the future? And the 2040 plan sets out those aspirational goals and objectives for us to follow through with. And uh, we're looking forward to the continued implementation of the 2040 plan as we learn uh, how to apply the work that we do to the aspirations of the community. I hope y'all are as excited about our city and our future as I am. Through our firm foundation, our current vision will allow Coppell to adapt and grow no matter what challenges and obstacles are put in front of us. These are long-term changes that can only happen with collaboration and consensus. Our unique diversity, excellent schools, great neighborhoods, first-in-class and nationally recognized parks and city services, our excellent business climate, and most important of all, our citizens, will continue to allow Coppell to be a leader in quality of living. As our own police chief, Danny Barton, tells our citizens, you're living in the right place. I couldn't agree with Danny more, and I'm very proud to say that the state of Coppell is stronger than ever. Thanks for watching.